Hello, people of the internet. Well, I'm here today to share some of the books that I will be discarding. And by discarding, I mean donating or selling or gifting to other people who I think would enjoy them more. First book I have, which will be a surprise to no one, is The Cider House Rules by John Irving. I hated this book. I read it as a buddy read with Amy over at From the Dusty Bookshelf, and we both hated it. If you would like a mild taste of how disturbing this book was, the protagonist keeps a lock of his crush's pubic hair as memorabilia. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. That's pretty disturbing. <laughs> and it's supposed to be romantic, too, and it's not... It's not... He doesn't even know her! He doesn't even know her, but he's just obsessed with her, and so he takes a lock of her pubic hair that's been shaved during an operation that she has. No. No. I have the full rant slash review on my channel if you're interested in how terrible this book objecti subjectively was, but yes, moving on, I have Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This book was very popular, and it won a Pulitzer Prize, and many people loved it. However, I did not. I actually didn't finish this. I got about 75% of the way through before I gave up. <laughs> um, in my opinion, it was overhyped. <laughs> um, even though it's definitely a soft-spoken novel, but I thought that the um, and maybe I just read it at the wrong time, but I'm definitely never going to reread this. And I thought, this is in great condition. I got it from my library book sale for like 10 cents. So I know a lot of people do love this book. So it's time for me to pass it on to someone who would love it. Because um, I clearly don't appreciate it in the way that it's meant to be appreciated. Next book that I have is The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants um, by Anne Brashears, I believe. Yeah, okay. Um, and so I got this as a gift when I was in middle school from someone who knew that I liked to read. And um, so I read this and all the other books of the series, but um, for some reason I still have this one. Um, I don't really know why. Uh, I, I'm kind of a pack rat, so... Um, uh, and overly sentimental. But I'm never going to reread it. Um, it's an interesting piece of genre fiction, and it kept me entertained through my teen years. But I've, yeah, I've outgrown it. Plus, it is kind of a weird concept, but but the stories have stayed with me. It was it was fun while it lasted, but I think if I can find someone who's going to be interested in it or who's the right age group, I might give that to them. Because um, I don't think I'll ever be able to sell that for much money. That book was too popular. Um, next, I have My Life with Chimpanzees, the fascinating story of one of the world's most celebrated naturalists by Jane Goodall. This is like her children's version of her autobiography. I love Jane Goodall. I love everything she does and what she stands for and her research and her and her conservation um, and her stance as a conservationist. I love her. Um, but this is a little... I, I think I've probably moved on from this. It's intended for children and it's and it has analogies that children will get. So I think it'll be best in the hands of, of an eight-year-old and not me because it will do the most good there. And so I figure I should spread the knowledge of amazing female scientists to some young girl. I have some young female neighbors who I think would like this. So, um, next book I have, which is really, which I really should have gotten rid of a long time ago, is The Babysitter Club, Chrissy's Mysterious Admirer. Um, so my church, when they were upgrading their library about 15 years ago or something, would just give out, um, would just give for free a bunch of these really old books like Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys and the Babysitter's Club. So I would just pick them up um, and take them home for free. This this must be like 50 years old or something like that. I don't know. But even when I read them, I felt like I was too old for them, but I had nothing to read. So I just read everything. Um, and I would like reread copies of the Babysitter Club. Um, but anyways, um, it's about these girls who are in like fifth grade, I think, and they form a Babysitter's Club and it's about the adventures that they get up to and like, like one time this kid has a fever um, of 105 when Mary Ellen is babysitting and so it's just it's fun I guess but yeah I I don't know why I kept this because I haven't read it for like 10 years <laughs> and um and someone will enjoy this not me but someone and so it's just like if it's just sitting in here um on my shelf collecting dust it's just a waste you know but if some but if someone who enjoys it and who loves the book can have it then that will make me happy. Um, 
next book that I have is The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell. I got this book earlier this year. This was recommended to me by someone um, and, um, who is into philosophy, and I thought I should give it a try, and I did. It's also been this bestseller and was very popular. Joseph Campbell is, um, he's not quite a philosopher, but he's a professor of mythology. And so this book is about um, what he thinks we can learn from myths and that myths have some inherent truths in them that say things like absolute truths about our world and about us as humans. So um, I thought that was, I thought it was an interesting concept, but I think he kind of took it too far, um, or at least in from my perspective, he tries to draw uh, too much meaning from myths, um, and he's kind of like making mountains out of molehills, so to speak. So, um, but it was really interesting to read, and I'm glad that I read it. Um, but I think I'm not going to. He has a very interesting perspective, but I think I'm not ever going to reread it. So I should probably just give it um, give it away. But um, oh, and the last book that I have is The Keeper of the Crystal Spring. Who is the author? Naomi Baltuk and Deborah Baltuk. So this is a book that takes place in the year 1086. I found this at a thrift store several years ago when I was in high school, and I mean, look at the cover and the pre-Raphaelite painting. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, it is. However, the book is not great. Um, I'm kind of a huge medieval history nerd, and so I'm immediately interested whenever I see a book about the early Middle Ages, because you don't often find books about that time. Um, and I got it for like a dollar at a thrift store. Uh, and as you can see, it's, you know, fairly substantial. How many pages? It's like 400 pages. Um, however, it did not meet my expectations. I don't remember exactly my feelings on it, but I remember feeling that it was cliched and historically inaccurate. And um, like the plot was uh, razor thin, like you could see the ending a mile away. Um, and I'm normally not a great I'm normally not great at guessing plots, but I, I guess this one right away. It's something like, there was a mysterious baby who was the child of aristocrats at, um, who disappeared. And now here is our protagonist, who just so happens to be growing up without parents. However, is there a connection? I don't know. I do, I can't imagine. Oh my dear. <laughs> um, and so, of course, she's the lost baby. Um, and the thing is, is that, I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to obvious plot lines, but the thing is, is that if you have it coming, like, there's going to be, like, this big plot twist at the end, I want to be at least somewhat surprised. I don't want to have guessed it 300 pages ago. Um, yeah, so I, um, so I'm going to give that book on. So those are six books that I will be passing on to new homes where they will be loved. Um, in my neighborhood, there's something called a little neighborhood library where, where people have they're kind of like mailboxes for library books, and they just, um, where you can take new books and you can borrow them and things like that, so I might put some of them in here. Um, it makes me happy to think of some books that I'd enjoy finding new homes. Um, so, yes, let me know if you've read any of these or if you haven't, or if I made giant mistakes in my life by spending some of my formative years reading any of these. Um, and, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Doi!